I'd like to make a very brief tutorial on what I've been doing with the uh, X-Tools, uh, a really interesting and versatile tool in the studio now uh, because it allows me to uh, engrave directly into metal uh, using the fiber laser capability of this machine. And one of the things I want to show you how to do is to make what's called a shot plate. And the shot plate that we'll demonstrate is this Celtic knot shot plate. Uh, but I've made several others and, and uh, they're very useful. Um, if you don't have a hydraulic press but and, and you don't cast your own metal, it can sometimes be intimidating or very expensive to, to get a hold of or somehow purchase uh, or make uh, very small but very detailed embellishments or small pieces of jewelry. Um, you can make them yourself, however, very easily by using something called a shot plate. Shot plates have been around for, for many, many centuries, and they are really just a, a form of dye, a, a dye that is made out of a harder material that you push a softer material into to make something. And uh, I've got several of them that I've purchased. Here's an example of two that are commercially available. There are many, many, many uh, that are available that, that you can, can purchase. Uh, but it's really handy to be able to use a modern tool like this laser and pretty much make any design you want, uh, any size, any design you want. So what we'll do then is I'll sh simply show you one of the ways in which you can use a small piece of metal, maybe that you've even melted from scrap, uh, to make a, a, a little tiny uh, bit of jewelry that, that can actually be quite attractive. Now, if you are already a jeweler, uh, this is probably not going to be very interesting to you, except for the fact that you, if you don't already have a laser, um, one of these can be a very, very uh, super addition to the studio. And if you're already a laser person, of course, you, you don't need to hear any of the stuff that I'm going to talk about with lasers. So I really intend this for an audience that's um, a little bit more like I was. Uh, I, I was a fairly... Uh, accomplished artisan hobby jeweler but I had never worked with lasers and so I've begun working with the laser as in an effort to enhance creativity and productivity in the shop and it's been a, a very very uh, illuminating and, and fun creative journey so far and I highly recommend that you give it a try. These are the images that I used. Uh, I used the, these black and whites, and you can do that. You can emboss these or engrave them exactly as they are, but they will be quite sharp. And so, oftentimes with these very sharp designs, it's better to use the Arty Mind uh, embossment tool, and you import these images into that and uh, ask it to generate a depth map for you and then the depth maps come out and they look something like this. Okay, here we are in our Xtools creative space and uh, we've got the Ultra and a new project. So first thing I'm gonna do is simply uh, insert an image. Here's the image we want to insert. So we'll just open it and uh, we can move that around. Now if you're not familiar with doing this, real quickly, if you want to emboss it, we'll go over here to embossment and then that'll pull up that as a uh, as a way to do this. Um, so then what we want to do is uh, simply then let's do an automatic measure to see what we have over there on the on the laser. This is all in real time and we'll take a picture of it. Okay so you see that I've got a piece of steel uh, sitting here in the uh, in the laser bed and it's focused uh, this is the relative size of the of this picture, right? So, first thing you want to do is go to Edit Image, use the wand to delete any background, save it, and then you go over to Adjustments, and if you want to, to emboss this negatively into a piece of metal, like I'm going to do, I simply invert it. And oftentimes then, it can be handy to uh, play with contrast, brightness, saturation, sharpness, things like that. So you might want to make it a little darker in this case, which means you're going to get more of a depth to it. Uh, sometimes that's not a good deal with uh, shot plates. I like to sharpen it a little bit, leave the grayscale alone. And now we'll just size it. And you've got two ways to size it. Obviously, you can just pull it uh, on, on the screen 
Or you can go over here and, and you say you want it to be a 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters. And I want it to be exactly, so I'll just do that. So I ungroup them and group them back again. So now we have our little 10 millimeter uh, bit that we're going to engrave, well, emboss. So over here then, we want to select the fiber IR. And let's leave it at 256 layers. Uh, that, that's simply going to be the number of passes that it makes um, for each grayscale level. And for us, let's give it 100% power. Let's set it at uh, somewhere between 150 and 250 millimeters per second. And I like to go at the highest resolution. Okay, so this will probably take in the ballpark of about uh, 30 to 40 minutes to complete. Uh, so first what we'll do is we'll frame it. And again, I, I like to frame as an outline. So here it is, it's just framing the outline of where we're going to see our uh, Celtic knot being embossed. And then next what we'll do is simply uh, go ahead to process and this will help us see both uh, how it's going to work and how long it's going to take. And this one's going to take 46 minutes. Alrighty, so then what we're going to do is send it to the laser and it's sending it to the laser which is good, that works pretty good. And then the next step is simply to uh, hit the button on the, on the uh, remote control and you start. So you repeat that for the other two designs, just placing them on your piece of steel where you want them. And you'll notice that I go from 280 to 300 uh, lines per centimeter for resolution. So now let's make ourselves a little uh, tiny lapel pin or collar pin. Well, here's just some uh, tiny bits of silver scrap. And you can use a... Uh, a butane torch for this. And this is just a an air propane torch, nothing fancy. And all I want to do is melt it into a glob. Or in other words, a, a piece of shot. This will actually be pretty large as a piece of shot goes. There, that's all that is to it. So that's the, the little sphere that we're going to use uh, to hammer into our uh, impression die that we've made as a shot plate. Well, what we want to do is simply drive a little piece of uh, metal. This is just a, a piece of silver I made out of some scrap. Um, it's a little large. If you're working with really tiny pieces um, or, or smaller elements, it, you can do it easily like this. Now this would work, however, because this is a little large, um, I'm going to go ahead first and flatten it a little bit so that, because uh, I have more than enough metal to push down in there. So I'm just going to begin by making it a little flatter. Now, if, if you're using your hydraulic press, obviously that's that's a non-issue. It's just not that important. But you see, now it'll more, more readily cover the entire uh, design as well. But now what I need to do is I need, of course, to anneal this because by whacking on that with a hammer, I've hardened it. The metal has become more brittle and hard um, because of the uh, mechanical stresses. So. I'll show you what I do to a kneel. Well, what I've done is I've put a little mark of a, of a Sharpie pen on top of the silver. Because um, what I need to do is I need to heat that metal back up uh, 
not not anywhere near melting but i need to heat it to like a dull cherry red but oftentimes in the shop the studio it's difficult to see that color so i put a little mark of sharpie on there because when that begins to disappear it'll indicate that the metal has reached the appropriate annealing temperature which is where the molecules in a way have begun to relax and the metal has become more soft so first we'll just turn on a torch and we'll just give it a give it a bath in flame and there we go so that's more than enough and then I'm just going to very quickly dip it in some water to quench it and now hopefully it's ready to be pounded into the design on the shot plate I'm gonna see if I can uh, drive this little piece of metal down into the triquetta now with the hammer Oops, bounced a little bit make sure it's seated See if we can get that out of there. What I like to do is I have a just an old bench knife that's very dull and oftentimes it is just enough to pop things out. That actually looks very nice. So what I'll do now of course is trim that piece. There are a lot of different ways you can do it. You can just file it off or grind it. I'll probably use my jeweler saw and trim around the edges and then clean it up with a file before we turn it into a little piece of uh, jewelry. And again, I think for this one, just a simple tie tack uh, will do. Now this is not intended to be a complete tutorial on how to do this, <clears throat> but I do want to, for those of you who aren't aware of what you do, I just want to show you quickly. What I want to do is solder a, a small pin onto the back of that so that we can turn it into a, uh, like a collar pin, uh, something like that, because it's, it's kind of a small element. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is take a little pallion of, of what's called solder. Now, if, if you're a jeweler, you, you know this, but if you're not, you may not. So please forgive me. Solder here isn't really what you think of for soldering like with uh, uh, a, a soldering iron. Soldering with a soldering iron is, is low temperature or what's called soft soldering. Uh, you don't want to use that. Never, gosh, never use, um, tin or lead or pewter based solder on any kind of fine jewelry it, it's just not not appropriate um, 
what we're doing here is we're hard soldering, which is actually a form of brazing. Uh, so this piece of, of solder is actually mostly about 75 to 80 percent silver and uh, the rest there's a little teeny bit of zinc and uh, some some copper in there and what we're going to do then is this solder piece has a slightly lower melting temperature uh, than the silver so what we need to do is heat the silver piece to to almost melting but not quite very very hot and we'll heat this piece and we will put uh, this pin into that piece of solder and put the piece of solder on the pin and then use that to attach the, uh, the piece of the, 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 the pin to this. Now, in order to absorb the oxygen that's gonna be trying to combine with the metal, which would prevent the two metals from joining together, I have to apply a chemical called a flux. I use borax. Uh, it's just borax and boric acid in water. So now I'm just going to heat it and go through the process. That's all there is to it. So then what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to uh, briefly place this in a little vat of weak acid that I have over here. It's called pickle um, and that will just take off some of the oxides and uh, then I will be ready to finish this off. Well, all I did was polish it a little bit more, add some patina, which is an oxidation process, and I'm just going to pair it with a little friction uh, clutch on the back so that it could be worn as a pin.